Solar Cycle 25 is ramping up. We've got several solar flares and several solar storms, and one of them is Earth-directed. Those stories and more in the news this week. This space weather forecast is sponsored in part by Millersville University. Come get certified in broadcast space weather. Visit millersville.edu slash swen. Space weather this week is definitely keeping us on our toes as Solar Cycle 25 ramps up. As we switch to our front side sun, you can see multiple bright regions in Earth view, including region 2770 that begins to rotate off of the sun's west limb. But before it goes, it fires one of the biggest flares we've seen of this solar cycle yet. It's a C-class flare, but bam, look at that blast wave. Oh my goodness, it's just gorgeous. We haven't seen that in quite some time. Then meanwhile, if you look down in the south, you've got multiple regions down there. They are also firing off solar flares and solar storms. We got a couple B-class flares and some solar storms being launched, including this one right here on the 16th. Pow! Do you see that right there? That big thing, that launched a long-duration B-class flare and a solar storm that is Earthward directed. And I'll get to that uh, more about that in just a second. Meanwhile, we also have a remnant coronal hole that's going to be rotating into the Earth strike zone here in the next couple days. It will send us some fast solar wind on the heels of that Earthward directed solar storm. So we might get a short period of extended storming with this one, which is good news. Now, as we switch to our far-sided sun, this is stereo a, and it's looking at the sun pretty much from the side. Look at the southern hemisphere. Do you see those two bright regions? Bam! Do you see that one? Sends off that first eruption that's pretty massive, but not Earth-directed. And then, bam! There's the other one. That was the one that was Earth-directed. That one's still on its way to Earth, and it's been just amazing because we've actually had a lot more activity down here in the southern hemisphere, and these regions should keep us very happy over the next week as we continue watching them cross across the Earth's facing sun. And then after that, we might get a little bit of a reprieve because it looks like the sun is a little bit more quiet after that. But still, it looks like it's going to be good news for war photographers. Switching to our chronograph view, now this is the view from Earth, and we're basically looking at the sun as if it were in eclipse. You can see that solar storm being launched off to the east of Earth, but look at that. It definitely is a partial halo, and because it's so incredibly bright and dense, that does mean it's moving a bit faster than these weak storms that we have seen uh, over the past couple years. And that is yet another indicator that Solar Cycle 25 is ramping up, and it sure looks like we could get clipped by this storm here in the next couple days. Switching to our solar storm prediction model, Enlil, this is NOAA's version of the model. The top panel's density, the bottom panel's velocity, and you're looking down at the sun from the North Pole with Earth being off to the right. Now you can see that solar storm as it's launched. It looks like it's going to go a bit east of Earth, but as it continues moving out, you can definitely see we could easily get hit by the western flank of this solar storm, and by the size of it, you can also tell it looks like a pretty dense structure. Now NOAA is expecting the impact to be late on the 19th, and if so, this is a reasonably fast storm. In fact, it could be the, the biggest storm we've seen of Solar Cycle 25 yet, but NOAA has not the only one. NASA has also done a run. They impact Their impact time is uh, about midday on the 20th, and if it does arrive later like that, then that means it's a little bit slower, so it could be a weak storm. So we kind of have to sit here and wonder, well, you know, I guess it all depends upon how the traffic is from the sun to the earth, right? At any rate, it's still good news for your aurora photographers because we could get aurora cleared down to mid-latitudes, so definitely keep your batteries charged. Switching to our moon, with the new moon coming on the 19th, we've got some good news for dark sky watchers, because even by the 22nd, the moon will still be only about 11% illuminated, so now is a great time to catch those dim objects in the sky, like, I don't know, maybe some aurora? Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating the hit from that Earth-directed solar storm. It could hit us as early as the 19th. So at high latitudes, NOAA is expecting active to even minor storm conditions with up to about a 50% chance of a major storm. Now this will be followed by a pocket of fast solar wind, so you can see at high latitudes, we could stay at active conditions uh, easily in through the weekend before things calm down. Now at mid-latitudes, NOAA is only expecting 
expecting active conditions, but with up to about a 15% chance of minor storm conditions. So your aurora photographers, even at mid-latitudes, definitely stay on your toes because you could get some decent chances for aurora. Switching to our solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, despite the fact we've had all of this solar flare and solar storm activity, believe it or not, everything is in the green when it comes to big solar flares. We have no risk for radio blackouts right now because we're back to a spotless sun. Who would have figured that, right? But this should make GPS users on Earth's day side very happy. Your GPS reception should be very good. That is until that solar storm hits on the 19th and the 20th. But until then, things should look pretty nice. Now also, we are managing to stay in the low 70s for solar flux, and that's thanks to all the bright regions in Earth view. So this means uh, radio propagation on Earth's day side should also stay in the marginal range, and that should um, you know, have some decent propagation again until that solar storm hits on the 19th and 20th. So be prepared for some issues, especially on Earth's night side. Now also because we are just beginning to come out of solar minimum, the cosmic ray flux is a bit higher than we'd like it to be. So you frequent flyers, and this does include air crew who fly at over 800 hours annually and fly at high latitudes and high altitudes, you are in the moderate range for radiation dose, and this does include prenatal passengers. So please take this into consideration in your flight plans. So the space weather this week is definitely keeping our attention. We have an Earth-directed solar storm that could hit us right around the 19th or into the 20th, and this is good news for your aurora photographers because this storm could be the biggest storm we've had since the beginning of this solar cycle. It looks like it could be a fun one, so definitely keep your batteries charged. Even you photographers at mid-latitude should get a chance, so we're going to be crossing our fingers there. Now also, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well, you know, we may have a spotless sun right now, but hey, we're managing to stay in the low 70s for solar flux thanks to all the bright regions and, believe it or not, a lot of the little flares that go pop, 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 pop. So if you hear static on the bands over the rest of this week, don't worry, it's not your rig. It's just the sun waking up, so enjoy. But also know that once the 19th and 20th come around and you start getting some issues with uh, propagation, that's probably due to that solar storm, especially on Earth's night side. And now for you GPS users, well, you know what? The solar flux is managing to stay pretty low, so your day-side GPS reception should be pretty good. But once that solar storm hits, it could mess things up for you if you're anywhere near Aurora, on Earth's night side, or near those dawn dust terminators. So to look out. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.